This is the situation, right? I heard of Yield Firm and I heard of DeFi for years and always knew about it, but I never fully understood how it worked. Like right now, I'm probably 40% comfortable with understanding what it's yield farming and liquidity pools. So if I'm confused about it and I'm very educated about crypto, I wonder how many other people really would love to know about DeFi and how yield farming and things work, but haven't found anybody to break it down easy enough for them to understand. That's what we're going to do in this video. So I'm about to learn more about it for you to learn more about it and we can get involved and start making some money if it's worth it. Let's get right into it. What's going on, beautiful people? I am Lando. Success, your favorite motivational teacher. The goal is whenever you come to my page to leave knowing something that you didn't know before you came here. So if you do, make sure you press that like button, press the subscribe button, and also hit that bell notification so you can be up to date whenever I post a new video. So we're talking about yield farming today and trying to understand it. So the first thing I wanted to do was make sure everybody understand yield. So whenever you hear the word yield, whenever it come down to finances, C says to produce as return from an expenditure or investment, furnish as profit or interest, a bond that yields 12%. So that's basically saying, if you have a thousand dollars in your savings account, if you got a yield at 12%, you're gonna earn 12% of that $1,000. Now, when we think of farming, we think of crops. So you see it kind of have it right over there. This soil should yield good crops. When you combine the two, that basically means you're getting a percentage back, but it keeps growing somehow. That's just a general overview of what I believe. So I looked at tons of different articles. I Googled what is yield farming. I looked on YouTube, yield farming explained under five minutes, under 10 minutes, yield farming explained. And everybody I watch, I probably watched over 20 videos, read over six articles, and 99% of them was too difficult to explain. I didn't learn anything. So here go an article I believe we can learn the best from. This is on CNBC TV. It's a yield farming in DeFi. All you need to know. In many, yield farming is an investment strategy that decentralized finance or DeFi. It involves lending or staking your cryptocurrency coins to get rewards in the form of transaction fees or interest. In the next video, I'm going to talk about staking, so I'm not really going to break that down. If you don't understand staking, just watch the next video, and we'll talk about it there. It's a decentralized finance. So that what DeFi mean. Decentralized finance, whenever you see DeFi, that's what it's short for. An emerging financial technology that aims to remove intermediaries in the financial transactions has opened up multiple avenues of income for investors. Yield farming is one such investment strategy in DeFi. It involved lending or staking your cryptocurrency coins or tokens to get rewards in the form of transaction fees or interest. What does that mean? Quick overview is basically taking your cryptocurrency and placing it somewhere for a certain amount of time. We're just going to keep it that simple. So it said if we do that, we're going to get rewarded in a form of a fee or interest. One of the two. It says this is something similar to earning interest from a bank account. You are technically lending money to the bank. Only yield farming can be riskier, more volatile, and complicated, unlike putting money in the bank. So we are used to basically putting money in our savings account, and they say, hey, you're going to get 0.004% just by leaving your money here. The bank is not telling you. They are taking your money, and they're lending it out to other people. But you're not making no money from it, or you're making that 0.4%. So yield farming is saying, we are doing the same thing, but you're going to get a higher percent. But I'm assuming it's more complex than that. Yo, farming involve moving crypto through different marketplaces. There are also an element of yield farming where the strategy can become less effective when more people know about it. But yield farming is currently the most significant growth driver of the DeFi sector, helping it expand from a market cap of 500 million to 10 billion in 2020 alone. So we are two years late from 500 million to 10 billion. So a lot of money been going through it. That's why we fully need to understand what's going on and try to get our position in somewhere, right? Here's a primer on a yield farming. How does yield farming work? So this is what we need to know. Users provide their cryptocurrencies for the functioning of the DeFi platform are known as a liquidity provider. So now whenever we see LP, we know that means liquidity provider. You provide your um, cryptocurrencies for the platform. These LPs provide coins or token 
to a liquidity pool, a smart contract based on decentralized applications, dApps that can contain all the funds. Once the LPs lock tokens into the liquidity fund, they are awarded a fee or interest generated from the underlying DeFi platform the liquidity pool is on. So let's break that down real quick. They are basically saying, if we provide our cryptocurrency and we put it into a pool, we have other people that's putting money into this pool. So let's say we have $100 million in this pool of money, right? So whenever somebody want to borrow cryptocurrency, you buy it or sell it or whatever it is, whenever that platform charges that fee, they are giving us a percentage as the liquidity provider. If I am wrong, please let me know in the comments how it works because I'm not the smartest person in the world. So I know a lot of people have been doing this a lot longer than me. So if you have more information, just type it in the comments and um, educate us. Put simply, it is an income opportunity by lending your tokens through a decentralized application. The lending happened through a smart contract where there is no middleman or intermediary. The liquidity pool powers a marketplace where anyone can lend or borrow tokens. The usage of these marketplace incur fees from the user and the fees are used to pay liquidity providers for staking their own tokens in the pool. That's what I just said before. I guess I jumped ahead since I already kind of know a little bit about it. Most yield farming take places on Ethereum platform. That is why the rewards are a type of ERC-20 token. While lenders can use the tokens as they wish, most lenders are currently speculators looking for arbitrage opportunities by cashing in on the token fluctuation in the market. Now, this part, I don't fully understand it. Are they saying they are waiting for the price to go up to sell it or go down? I don't know. How did yield farming become popular? The boom in the practice of yield farming can be attributed to the launch of the comp token, a governance token of the compound finance ecosystem. Governance token allow holders to take part in the governance of a DeFi protocol. The governance token will often become algorithmically distributed with liquidity incentives to launch a decentralized blockchain. This gives potential yield farmers an incentive to provide liquidity in the pool. Some popular yield farming platforms are Aave, I believe you said Aave, Compound, Uniswap, SushiSwap, Curve Finance. I invested in Compound early through um, Coinbase. They actually did like free Compound to learn about it. And when I learned about it, I said, this is a genius concept. This was years ago. So I actually made money off of compound, not necessarily knowing how it worked, but I understood enough. How are yield farming returns calculated? The estimated return in the yield farming process is calculated in terms of annual percentage yield, APY. It is the rate of return that a user gains over a year. Compound interest is also factored in the APY calculation. What are the risks of yield farming? I definitely want to see what's the risk because a lot of people talk about the high upside of it, but I don't know what's the um, bads about it. Cyber theft and frauds are major concerns beyond regulatory risk that most digital assets are subject to due to the lack of concrete policies regarding cryptocurrency worldwide. All transactions involve digital assets, which use the software as storage. Hackers can be adept at finding the vulnerabilities and exploit in the software codes to steal funds. And then there is volatility of tokens. Cryptocurrency prices has been historically known to be volatile. The volatility can also be in a short burst. So the price of the token can surge or crash. I believe they meant to say crash when it is locked in the liquidity pool. This could create unrealized gains or losses and a result you could have been better off if you have kept your coins available to trade. Smart contracts and DeFi platforms are not as infallible as they seem. Small teams with limited budgets by protocols. This can increase the risk of smart contract bugs in the platform. So that gave me a little bit of a better understanding, but I noticed they really didn't talk about like, what's the real cons of it? They really didn't say anything. So here go another article. It's a, it's a um, different article by decrypt.co. It's a quick rundown of yield farming. Liquidity providers deposit funds into a liquidity pool. We understand that. Deposited funds are normally stable coins linked to the US dollar, such as DIA, USDT, USDC, and more. So I'm hip to that. People like the stable coins, right? Because they, because the price don't go up and down like that. Another incentive to add funds to the pool could be to accumulate a token that is not on the open market 
or has low volume by providing liquidity to a pool that rewards it. Okay, that makes sense. So like the higher risk, high rewards. Your returns are based on amount that you invested and the rules of that protocol that is based on. You can create complex chains of investments by reinvesting your reward tokens into other liquidity pools, which in turn can be a different reward token. So I wanna know in the comments, do you guys understand a little bit more what's going on? But it's one thing that I didn't see they talked about is if the price completely crashed down, you can actually lose your money. I don't see any information about that. Um, let's look it up. I forget the term. Let me do some research real quick. So I typed in losing money in yield farming is called. That's what it's called. It's called impermanent loss. I don't necessarily understand impermanent loss. Everybody that tried to break it down skims over it so i think most people really don't understand it so let's see if we can find out a definition that kind of make it make sense this is on zipmex.com what is impermanent loss in DeFi to yield farming impermanent loss is closely associated with yield farming a type of investment with which you lend your tokens to earn rewards it might sound a bit like staking but it's a lot more complex so we understand this but we want to know how you end up losing that money. So you see right here it's saying it's too complicated. So most people don't really know how to break it down. Um, and permanent loss calculator. So I guess they've given us an example. It's a token A. Um, you get it for 1500 Token B a dollar. Future prices is going to 2000 and it's going to $1. Then permanent loss is 1.03%. If $500 of token A and 500 of token B were held, have 0 .00 tokens yeah i actually don't understand this can somebody in the comments please break down in permanent loss because every youtube i've seen somebody try to break it down nobody really knows so that is my thing about going into DeFi. most people is making money or losing a lot of money but they don't break it down i hope this helped you out a little bit more about yield farming i went from about 40 percent to about 65 percent so next video, we're going to talk about staking and we're going to keep on going until we figure this out. So make sure you subscribe, leave me a like, leave me a comment, and also hit that bell notification. I'm Lando Sess and I'm out.